cold store designing so in that uh, knowledge of psychrometry will be very useful to you the psychrometry is the branch of science which deals with the properties of air and vapor mixture so as we already know that uh, in the atmosphere whatever air we are having it is always having some amount of water vapors in it so the vapor in this case in the case of psychrometry we are referring to this water vapor part so air and vapor mixture will always be existing in the atmospheric air it is not 100% dry so as we are having two different phases of matters so one is air which is non condensable gas or we can say gaseous phase and another one is vapor which is condensable gas so we are saying two different things air and vapor vapor as it is a condensable matter it is dealt separately than the gaseous part which is air just going quickly through this psychrometry part what are the properties or what are some of the terms we have dry air dry air means the air which is devoid of any water vapor part that is dry air and volumetrically it is composed of 79% nitrogen 21% oxygen and molecular weight of dry air is taken as 29 approximately so it is the weighted average of the molecular weights of this uh nitrogen oxygen and other gases mixtures so uh, it is not that only nitrogen and oxygen are there there are several other gases and those other gases will be making up the rest of the part and uh, that rest of the part may be small but it is is uh, 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 there only in the case of moist air we will be having along with this air a, a, a mixture of various gases water vapors as well so the quantity of water vapor present in air it depends on temperature and its quantity may vary from 0 to the maximum and what do we mean by maximum here is as there is capacity for holding anything in a particular position similarly in the case of air air has some water vapor holding capacity and that capacity changes as the conditions of air changes so as if we are having higher temperature air it can hold more amount of water vapors in the same quantity of air as compared to the condition when we are having lesser temperature and also it depends also on the pressure we are dealing so if we are having atmospheric pressure the water vapor holding capacity would be different if we are having higher pressure than atmosphere or lower pressure than atmosphere and we can also have some more properties as well and those properties would be known as psychrometric property which would be dealing in a moment so water vapor you already know now these are some of the terms which are technical with respect to psychrometry so we are having dry bulb temperature it is the temperature which is measured by ordinary thermometer so also called as dbt wet bulb temperature when the bulb of thermometer is covered with wet cloth and it is exposed to current of moving air so it is uh, the air has to be moved around that wet cloth and that wet, cl wet cloth is covering the bulb of thermometer then whatever is the reading uh, recorded by the thermometer that is wet bulb temperature and the difference between these two is known as wet bulb depression so when uh, we are having this wet cloth wound around or wrapped around the thermometer so what it does is it removes some uh, heat from that uh, uh, air and hence it decreases the temperature recorded by the thermometer because the water which is present in the air is evaporating so water when it is evaporating it requires some amount of heat energy and that heat energy will be uh, uh, taken up in the form of latent heat so there will be change of phase for water from liquid to vapor and that heat energy transferred from the air will reduce the temperature recorded by the thermometer and hence there will be a wet bulb depression so when the air is already fully saturated with water vapor no evaporation will be occurring and hence wet bulb depression will become zero it means 
both dryable temperature and wet bulb temperature will become same so the both of them will be same now dew point temperature dew point temperature is that temperature at which dew drops appear on some cold surfaces so on some cold surfaces what will happen there will be some dew drops occurring so when does the uh, those dew drops start forming those dew drops will be starting to form when we are having some amount of water vapors converting back into the liquid form and that will happen as the temperature of air is dropped when we are cooling the air and when the air has been cooled it is taking away some heat content from air water vapor mixture and at some stage there will be a state coming where we will be having some water vapors forming starting to condense so that is dew drop formation so this is the dew dew drop temperature and the difference between dry bulb temperature and dew point temperature is known as dew point depression just like wet bulb depression then we are having specific humidity which is also known as humidity ratio it is defined as mass of water vapor present per kg of dry air so we are dealing both vapors and dry air separately here so it is a ratio and it is expressed in uh, despite of the fact that it is ratio of mass per unit mass then also it is uh, expressed as these units which is grams per kilogram of dry air or kilogram per kilogram of dry air so in the numerator side we are having water vapors so uh, uh, generally it is very less so uh, we express in in the terms of gram per kilograms then absolute humidity it is the weight of water vapor present in unit volume of air and is also known as absolute humidity so one unit volume means 1 meter cubes of air and what amount of water vapors it can hold so that amount of water vapor will be its absolute humidity then degree of saturation degree of saturation is a ratio of mass of water vapor associated with unit mass of dry air so and uh, as it is a ratio so this this term is in the numerator second term is mass of water vapor associated with unit mass of dry air at, at saturated at same temperature means we are having two different masses of air and both these different masses of air are at same temperature but the difference is that in the numerator side the mass of water vapor for that air which we are taking in that case air is not saturated it is still having some capacity to hold water vapors and in the denominator case we are having that mass of water vapor which is present in the air which is already saturated at that same same temperature so that is degree of saturation then relative humidity it is also a ratio and it is a ratio of actual mass of water vapor in given volume to the mass of water vapor if the water uh, air is fully saturated at the same temperature so uh, it is similar kind of ratio then sensible heat of air it is quantity of heat which can be measured by measuring that dbt of air and it is known as sensible heat of air then total heat of air total heat of air will be sum of sensible heat of dry air and sensible plus uh, uh, and sensible and latent heat of water vapors so sensible heat of dry air and uh, sensible plus latent heat for water vapors because we are having both air as well as dry air as well as water vapors present in the air then humid specific volume the volume of air per kg of dry air in mixture is known as humid specific volume it is expressed as meter cube per kg dry air so it is inverse of uh, uh, that density and these are some of the properties which you will be finding in the psychrometric chart so these are seven properties which you will be finding for a given conditions on a psychrometric chart so if we are knowing any two of these seven properties then we can locate the uh, position of the point or we can locate the uh, condition of air on the psychrometric chart and other five properties can be then read out from the psychrometric chart so these are three are temperature dry bulb wet bulb and dew point temperatures then relative humidity humidity ratio specific enthalpy and specific volume now we will be seeing uh, just uh, these things uh, here 
दिस इज ट्राइबल थर्मोमीटर जस्ट अ नॉर्मल थर्मोमीटर देन फॉर वेट बल्ब दिस काइंड ऑफ विक इज देयर विच इज वेक्टेड विद वॉटर एंड इट वुड बी प्लेस इन द मूविंग एयर स्ट्रीम तो दिस इज हाउ इट विल बी वर्किंग एयर विल बी मूविंग थ्रू दिस वेट क्लॉथ एंड दैट इज हाउ इट विल बी इवेपरेटिंग सम पार्ट ऑफ वाटर पेपर्स एंड द टेम्परेचर रिकॉर्डेड बाय दिस थर्मोमीटर विल बी लोअर देन द ट्राइबल थर्मोमीटर दिस इज साइक्रोमीटर सो इन दिस केस इन दिस साइक्रोमीटर वॉट इज हैपनिंग वी आर हैविंग अ पेयर ऑफ थर्मोमीटर वन थर्मोमीटर विल बी रिकॉर्डिंग ड्राइबल टेम्परेचर अनदर विल बी रिकॉर्डिंग वेट बल्ब टेम्परेचर सो इन द केस ऑफ ड्राइबल टेम्परेचर वी आर नॉट हैविंग दिस वीक इन देश ऑफ वेट बल्ब टेम्परेचर दिस वीक इज डिप्ड इन अ ग्लास ऑफ वाटर और सम कंटेनर विच इज फिल्ड विद वाटर सो दैट इट रिमेन्स वेट थ्रू आउट बाई कैपिलरी एक्शन एंड वी विल बी हैविंग टू सेपरेट रीडिंग्स ऑफ थर्मोमीटर्स एंड एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू वेन वी आर हैविंग टू ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टीज वी कैन मार्क द पॉइंट ऑन साइक्रोमेट्रिक चार्ट and other five properties will be then known from that so this is how will how it will be done so this this is sling psychrometer which is used in the laboratories so here we can see that uh, we are having a handle with a frame and on that frame we are having a, a pair of thermometers of, out of which one is driveable th uh, th uh, temperature recording thermometer another one is wet bulb temperature recording thermometer and uh, both of these thermometers will be recording their temperatures uh, simultaneously and we will be having this so we will be having these two temperature readings which can be found on the a uh, uh, psychrometric chart so in this case we will be using this handle to rotate this uh, frame so that the air velocities in the range of 5 to 10 meters per seconds can be get through this wet wick and this is aspirating psychrometer in which we are using this uh, air blower in this air blower arrangement again the same thing will be happen so this this thing will be uh, creating a current of air which is fast enough so that the velocity is recommended which is in the range of 5 to 10 meters per seconds are obtained through this wet peak now coming on to the psychrometric chart itself so this is a picture of psychrometric chart basically this is a graph on which we are having so many of the properties not only seven many of the properties of psychrometric interest displayed so here on the, this chart we can see on the y axis we are having this moisture content so here you can see this is moisture content kg per kg of dry air so here on the y axis you can see mo moisture content so it is in kg per kg dry air so that means here you can see it is 0.000 Zero zero one. So uh, th this this would be uh, for moisture. That this much kilograms of moisture can be held by the air per kilogram of dry air. So this is on the y-axis and on the x-axis we are having DBT tribal temperature. Now about other properties, how we can read? Uh, we we are seeing other things. So here you can see wet bulb or saturation temperature. So on this curve we are having. the same temperature as written on the dry bulb temperature scale so this is the wet bulb or saturation temperature and these inclined line which are coming from this specific enthalpy at saturation scales these lines are used to read these wet bulb temperature so what we can do is if on the psychrometric chart if we are using these temperatures are not indicated then we can follow along these lines come to this curve this last curve and then drop a perpendicular on this dry bulb temperature scale and we can then read this wet bulb temperature on dry bulb temperature scale in that case now uh, regarding dew point temperature for dew point temperature what we will be doing is we will be required to draw a horizontal line from the point of interest to this last curve so these curves these here you can see there are many curves so these are relative humidity curves so uh, the readings are here it is 10 10% 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 and 90 and final one this is 100% that means it is saturation curve so above this no more moisture can be held by the air so that is how we can read three temperature on one single same scale rh on these curved lines or curves 
enthalpy specific enthalpy this this is the scale it is starting here so here we can see the, this scale for uh, specific enthalpy at uh, saturation which is in kilojoules per kilogram of air so here this is air that means moist air not only dry air so this is moist air overall so three temperatures one moisture content one specific enthalpy and relative humidity so these are six of the properties seventh property is this specific volume at the bottom you can see specific volume meter cubes per kg of dry air and these lines very sparsely populated you can see 0.75 meter cubes per kg 0.8 meter cube per kg 0.85 meter cube per kg 0.9 so these lines are for specific volume so this is how if we have any point on this graph then we can read all seven properties from this chart and regarding other things which are indicated here you can see deviation enthalpy deviation these these different kinds of curves are indicated and on this scale there is one more scale which is starting with here as one and it is going up to 0.35 and we are having several slopes indicated here so we are having horizontal lines at one then this is increasing in angle and here we are seeing 0.35 at this particular level of inclination so basically it is indicating the sensible heat factor of a psychrometric process so basically when we are changing the conditions of air then that condition of air from previous point to the final point if we join and uh, those two point and find a line then the slope of line can be read from this particular scale here and we can find out the sensible heat factor which we will be dealing in just a moment so here you can see on the psychrometric chart these uh, vertical lines they are reading tribal these inclined line these are reading wet bulb then these are dew point lines which are horizontal and these are rh curves relative humidity lines then this is humidity ratio on the y axis humidity ratio this is kg moisture per kg dry air this this is specific enthalpy scale which is a zigzag kind of line and from there we are having many lines going through this curve this graph then specific volume line these are a bit more uh, uh, steeper curve steeper uh, angle so this is how we can have these seven properties starting from a to g so a absolute humidity b specific volume c dry bulb then d this is relative humidity e dew point f enthalpy and g this is wet bulb so we can read if if this is the condition of air this is dry bulb and this is dew point and this g if we drop a perpendicular down here that will be a wet bulb so that means we are having the value of dry bulb as maximum then in between we will be having wet bulb temperature so here you are seeing wet bulb at this particular point when we drop a perpendicular it will reach here so its value will be less than this dry bulb and dew point will be the lowest so always we can have dew point temperature is less than or equal to wet bulb temperature is less than or equal to dry bulb temperature all three temperatures can be equal if the point is on the saturation curve because on the saturation curve all the temperatures dry bulb wet bulb and dew point will be exactly the same so in that case only these three temperatures would be same so this is one more representation you can just go through it now examples of this i would be just uh skipping this part because we are just uh, uh, focus required to focus on to the cold storage designing part so these are eight uh, psychrometric processes basically only six are uh, indicated on this graph so if we are having initial point here and the changing in change of the condition moves that point in this horizontal rightward direction then that is a heating process because we are changing the temperature dry bulb temperature in the reverse direction it is cooling temperature in the vertical directions in the upward side it is humidifying because we are not changing dry bulb temperature and we are adding the moisture only so that is humidification and in the downward direction vertical downward it is dehumidification we are reducing the moisture because on the y axis we were having moisture content and this uh, vertical direction line is not changing dry bulb temperature so only humidity or means water vapor content is changed 
and in this inclined direction two of the directions have been shown other two will be in this direction so that would be a combination of these basic four processes so what are these basic four processes as we know that air is a mixture of dry air and water vapors so we are having basic two properties either we can change temperature or we can change moisture content when we are changing temperatures then on the uh, we are moving in the x axis direction either heating or cooling in the y axis direction we are changing the moisture so either humidifying or dehumidifying in this in these ranges in these inclined directions we are having heating and humidification cooling and humidification in this quadrant in this second quadrant we will be having cooling and humidification third quadrant cooling and dehumidification fourth quadrant we will be having heating and dehumidification so whatever process is uh, there if we are required to specify that process then always we should first specify what is changing with respect to temperature and then we will be specifying what is changing with respect to moisture just like as in the Uh, explanation of any graph we will be saying x axis term first then y axis term when whenever we are referring to some point in a coordinate system then what we say point x y that means x term is indicated first then we are indicating y term on the psychrometric chart x term is temperature y term is moisture content same is the case with the specification of psychrometric processes so it will be heating and humidification in first quadrant not humidification and heating okay first it is heating then it is humidification and if we are having basic processes in that case if only one of the term is changing either x or y then we will be specifying only that so only cooling only heating in that case no change in the moisture content part same way in the humidification and dehumidification processes now the, these are some of the equations which you have already dealt with in the uh, heat and mass transfer courses this is mass balance and energy balance so uh, most of the air conditioning processes will be modeled as this td flow process and these are general balances which we will be using now coming on to the process itself so if we are having a heating or a cooling coil suppose we are having a duct in that duct we are having a heating coil so heating coil is providing heat into the system air is coming at these conditions t1 omega 1 and this phi 1 so phi is the relative humidity omega is moisture content and t is temperature dry bulb temperature and it is coming out at this conditions where temperature has changed so this is how the process will be uh, drawn on the psychrometric chart one is initial condition two is final condition so uh, in this 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 is indicating the cooling process not the heating process so suppose uh, uh, in this graph we are saying that that it is cooling process that means this was not heating coil it was cooling coil if uh, it is heating coil then point 1 will be here and point point 2 will be at this side so this is how heating and humidification can be done first it, there is a heating coil then there is a humidification means spray of water or steam or some form of moisture is there then cooling and dehumidification process in that case you can see that uh, uh, simultaneously as as soon as the uh, air is coming it is first being cooled so on this chart you are seeing it is coming from point 1 to point x so here it is reaching dew point temperature and then as due to uh, its cooling there is some condensate so this is the moisture which is being condensed and now the moisture content has changed so this is cooling with dehumidification process evaporative cooling is the case when we are spraying the liquid water and that this liquid water is forming in the form of water vapors in the moist in the air stream itself now coming on to the adiabatic mixing of two air streams so we are having two air streams here at point 1 we are having one air stream at conditions 1 here at uh, this duct we are having air at conditions 2 and these conditions are shown on the graph psychrometric chart here as oh, point 1 here point 2 here and they are mixing in this mixing section and finally a uh, combined air stream at condition 3 comes out then how to find out these 
conditions at condition 3 what would be its value so basically as we are having these two conditions the condition 3 will be on the line joining these two conditions condition 1 and 2 basically what we can do is we can use these three balances mass balance of dry air mass balance of water vapor and energy balance and in these three equation we can then form this in a system of equation which is the ratio of these masses so we are having masses two different masses m a1 which is mass of air at condition 1 m a2 which is mass of air at condition 2 and here you will also notice one more thing that on the top of m we are having a dot that means it is mass flow rate not mass as such so it would be in the form of kg per second so we are seeing that ma1 by ma2 is omega 2 minus omega 3 divided by omega 3 minus omega 1 so on the psychrometric chart if we see that this is omega 3 minus omega 1 and this is omega 2 minus omega 3 so m m a1 over ma2 is this term this top term over this bottom term similarly if we say with respect to enthalpies this is h2 minus h3 this top term divided by h3 minus h1 this bottom term so instead of going into solving these equations graphically we can see that these ratio mass ratios are graphically denoted in this case that when the point one is at the bottom then MA1 by MA2 is given as this top part divided by bottom part. So that means the air flow rate at condition 1 is corresponding to difference of enthalpy of condition 2 and 3 and air flow rate at condition 2 is corresponding to difference of uh, this moisture content at condition 3 and 1. So whatever point we are taking. So here we are taking point 2 so point 2 is missing here here we are taking point 1 and point 1 is missing here so here we it, it is 1 then 2 then 3 here it is 2 then 3 then 1 so graphically we can see that point 1 is corresponding to its opposite part point 2 is also corresponding to its opposite part so in that way we can easily remember this equation so now coming over to the cold storage is uh, its designing part the basic purpose of cold storage is to store the perishable food Food products at optimum temperature and hence to enhance the shelf life. In the dairy plants, they are required to store milk, butter, cheese, etc., which are our dairy products. And condition of storage for these cold storages is different depending on the nature of product. For example, in the case of ice cream, we need to store it at minus 25 approximately, while in the case of milk, it is at 3 to 4 degrees Celsius. Similarly, many fruits and vegetables are stored in the cold storages. Now, on that basis, we can classify on the usage what type of cold storage is it. So, we can have milk cold storage, cheese cold storage, butter cold storage, storage potato cold storage etc so it means what type of product we are storing on that basis we are classifying the cold storages we can also classify on the basis of operating temperature whether it is above zero or below zero basically what we are having with this zero is as we know that zero is the freezing point of water so whatever water content is there in the product that may freeze if we are maintaining the cold storage temperature below 0 degree Celsius and uh, the whole water will not be freezing but it can start freezing. So depending on the product's requirement we can have these kind of cold storages. Then on the basis of construction also we are having constructed cold storage, walk-in cold storage. Constructed cold storages means which are constructed by masonry materials. So it would be as per the design and layout of a dairy plant. In the case of walk-in in cold storages they are prefabricated and they are uh, smaller in size so they can also be mobile now coming on to the types of loads what are the types of loads in the cold storages basically we are having two different or two separate kinds of loads to be studied or to focused in the case of cold storages we are having sensible heat load and latent heat load sensible heat load means the loads which are changing or trying to change the temperature and in the case of latent heat load the loads which which are trying to change the phase. In the case of change of phase, we are 
focusing on the water vapor parts. So in the case of sensible heat load, heat can flow through walls, ceiling, floors, doors, etc. So that would be structural heat gain. So it can be through conduction of heat through walls, ceiling, floors and doors. So uh, we can apply the equations of heat transfer by these modes of heat transfer to calculate these many uh, loads, sensible heat load. Then heat gain from infiltration of air because there will be uh, several openings of doors there for movement of product, for movement of men, for movement of various things. And due to that and also due to some cracks and crevices in the sides of doors, in some walls, etc. There can be some air exchange. So due to that, air at outdoor conditions can come in the air uh, or meet the air at indoor conditions and hence they will be having some heat load associated with it. Then heat received by the workers working in the cold storage because we are having some workers working in the cold storage and those workers are not at the cold storage temperature. So they will be also having some sensible heat load. Then heat load due to lighting and motors because they are also hot. So they will be having their own load. Coming on to the latent heat load. Latent heat load from the infiltration of air because in the case of infiltration of air, the moisture content of air may not be same at outdoor and indoor conditions. Generally, it is different only. So we will be having some latent heat load because we need to change the moisture also for that infiltered air to the conditioned uh, uh, conditions so the target condition then heat load from occupancy means whatever the workers are working inside they are respirating and due to their respiration they are also exhaling some amount of moisture into the air so that moisture is also required to be removed or condensed then latent heat generated from the stored products so some of the products also have some respiration so similar to the load from occupancy this load will be also there so Based on these many loads, we will be having a calculation and adding all these loads together to for find out the uh, overall or total load of the cold storage. We are having LHL latent heat load and SHL sensible heating load. So these are some of the equations you, you can just go through them that what are these loads. So uh, this would be uh, very much clear when we will be taking up the numerical exercises. So up till here, is there any question or doubt to be raised? This is why the velocity of air in the slip segment is set between 0 to 5 meter per second. It is not 0 to 5, it is 5 to 10 and basically this is due to uh, uh, helping in or aiding in the evaporation process because in the case of wet bulb temperature what we are considering is the reduction in the temperature is due to the evaporation of water vapor and when we are wrapping a wet cloth around the bulb of thermometer then that wet cloth is having moisture and as it is not a unimolecular layer of moisture, it is having some depth. So due to that depth, the air may not be able to penetrate the layer of moisture which is uh, contacting the thermometer bulb or the sensor. So to have or uh, help in this measurement or aiding in this measurement to ensure that air has effect on the last layer of moisture which is, which is attached to the sensor or the bulb, it is set in the range of 5 to 10 meters per second. If it is not in that particular range, the readings will be not uh, the readings which it should be. It would be something different. 